Good day everyone. We are here to present about the phosphorus industry. I am Kyla Mercado to present about the history, uses, and importance of phosphorus. Phosphorus is a solid which exhibits allotropy, which means that it has multiple forms in the same physical state, and its main forms being the white, the red, and the black. Phosphorus is an extremely poisonous waxy substance and in one of its major sources is apatite, which is an impure calcium phosphate mineral found in phosphate rocks. Tackling about the main forms of phosphorus, the first one is the white phosphorus. It is white waxy solid which gives off a greenish white glow. Seen in the picture, it glows in the dark. It is also flammable and a deadly poison which exhibits the most activity among the three forms. Next one, the red phosphorus, which is a powder which can vary in color from orange to purple due to slight variation in its chemical structure. It also does not dissolve in many liquids. The last form, black phosphorus, which is made under high pressure and it, also, it looks like graphite powder, it also has the ability to conduct electricity and considered more passive in chemical reactions like the red phosphorus. A brief history of phosphorus. Hennig Brand discovered phosphorus in 1669 in Hamburg, Germany, preparing it from urine. He was searching for the philosopher's stone. It was prepared from urine and was the first element to be chemically discovered. Urine naturally contains considerable quantities of dissolved phosphates. In 1840, Joseph von Liebig, a German chemist, suggested the formation of superphosphate by dissolving bones and sulfuric acid that made the phosphorus more available to plants. This practice becomes so popular that bone supply is restricted in a very short time. To overcome this problem, some workers started extraction of phosphorus from rocks. In 1847, the first commercial production of phosphorus rocks from the mining of coprolites began in Suffolk and Great Britain. One of the importance of phosphorus is that it is the sixth most abundant element in living organism, which is a necessary constituent of DNA and our genetic code, and provides the energy for all metabolic processes. It is also an essential mineral for biological processes and structures that support life in plants and animals, in all living cells, proteins, nucleic acids, enzymes, energy carriers, healthy bone and the development, and other more. There are a lot of uses of phosphorus in the industry, which are it is a vital plant nutrient and main use in production of fertilizers, manufacture of safety matches, the red phosphorus, pyrotechnics and incendiary shells, still manufacture in the production of phosphor bronze. It is also used to make light emitting diodes, used in pesticides and detergents. Elemental phosphorus is also used to manufacture other chemical intermediates such as phosphorus trichloride, phosphate pentasulfide, sodium hypophosphite, red phosphorus, thermal phosphoric acid, and other applications. This is the broader view of elemental phosphorus derivatives. Phosphorus is widely used as fertilizers and as non-fertilizer products. Non-fertilizer products include feed phosphate, food phosphate, detergents, glyphosate, and other elemental phosphorus derivatives. Good day. This is Manath Marilia, and I'll be discussing the processes involved in the production of different elemental phosphorus derivatives. There are two main processes in the phosphorus industry, and they are the wet process and the thermal process. As you can see here, there are three different shapes in the diagram. The square indicates the raw material used. The diamond indicates the intermediate form after undergoing the process. And lastly, the oval shape, which indicates the commercial products. The two processes have the same raw material, which is the phosphate rock. 
also known as the appetite. Now, what's the difference between the two methods? Let's start with the wet process. Wet process is where phosphate is treated with sulfuric acid to produce phosphoric acid in order to make phosphate-containing fertilizers for global agriculture and feed supplements. The next process is the thermal process. Thermal process is an energy-intensive process that reduces the phosphate to pure white phosphorus for the production of phosphorus-containing chemicals. You may wonder why don't we use the element phosphorus as the raw material. Technically, phosphorus cannot be manufactured or destroyed, and there is no substitute or synthetic version of it available. Most of the phosphorus used in fertilizer comes from phosphate rock, a finite resource formed over millions of years in the Earth's crust. 90% of the world's mined phosphate rock is used in agriculture and food production, mostly as fertilizer and animal feed. Let's now discuss further the wet process. This is the overview of the flow diagram of a wet process phosphoric acid plant, and we will be discussing them in detail. In a wet process facility, phosphoric acid is produced by reacting sulfuric acid with naturally occurring phosphate rock. The phosphate rock is dried and crushed into the meal and then continuously fed into the reactor along with sulfuric acid. The reaction in the reactor combines calcium from the phosphate rock with sulfate, forming calcium sulfate commonly referred to as gypsum. Gypsum is then separated from the reactor solution by filtration, while some will go to the absorber. Most facilities use the hydrate process, which produces gypsum in the form of calcium sulfate with two molecules of water. Newer facilities today use a hemihydrate process that produces calcium sulfate with the half molecule of water. This process has the advantage of producing wet process phosphoric acid with a higher phosphorus pentoxide concentration and less impurities than the dehydrate process. Moving on, the crystals that went in the filtration unit is washed thoroughly to yield at least 99% recovery of the filtered for phosphoric acid. Water is then removed from the filtration unit and recycled through a surge cooling pond to the phosphoric acid. The slurred gypsum is pumped into a gypsum pond for storage. While this process is being done, considerable heat is generated in the reactor. In older plants, this heat was removed by blowing air over the hot slurry surface. Modern plants vacuum, flash a cool portion of the slurry, and then recycle it back into the reactor. Some of the water was evaporated, and the phosphoric acid is produced in the evaporator. The gypsum in the absorber will be mixed with water, producing hydrofluoric acid, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphilicic acid in the top layer, and phosphilicic acid and water in the bottom layer. The reactions involved in this step is the reaction between calcium fluoride and sulfuric acid that will produce hydrofluoric acid and calcium sulfate. The second reaction involved is the reaction between hydrofluoric acid and silicon dioxide, which will produce hexafluorosilic acid and water. Wet process phosphoric acid normally contains 26 to 30% phosphorus phantoxide. In most cases, 
The acid must be further concentrated to meet phosphate feed material specifications for fertilizer production. The obtained phosphoric acid from the wet process will then be used in the production of a series of liquid or solid fertilizers. We will only discuss here the five most common use fertilizers, which are the single superphosphate, triple superphosphate, nitrophosphoric acid, diammonium phosphate, and monoammonium phosphate. Starting with the single superphosphate, with the use of phosphoric acid plus electricity, heat, and sulfuric acid, SSP is created. It is the first commercial mineral fertilizer which led to the development of the modern plant nutrient industry. This material was once the most commonly used fertilizer, but other phosphorus fertilizers have largely replaced SSP because of its relatively low phosphorus content. Triple superphosphate is composed of inorganic nutrients that are used to restore soil components essential for farming. To create TSP, we need phosphoric acid plus electricity and heat. The industry of superphosphate fertilizers is for increasing root development and to help plant sugars move around more efficiently for quicker ripening. Its more common use is in the promotion of large, larger flowers and more fruits. Nitrophosphate is generally accepted term for any fertilizer that is produced by a process involving treatment of phosphate rock with nitric acid. This fertilizer is produced by using phosphoric acid plus nitric acid, electricity, water, heat, and additives. It is also sold in granular form to be used for direct application to soil. It is commonly spread on the soil surface, mixed with a root zone, or applied as a concentrated band beneath the soil surface prior to planting. Diammonium phosphate is produced by using phosphoric acid plus electricity, heat, and ammonia. The fertilizer that quickly became the item of commerce is mostly used by the growers today and it had the biggest concentration of phosphate and nitrogen. DAP fertilizer is an excellent source of phosphorus and nitrogen for plant nutrition. It is highly soluble and thus dissolves quickly in soil to release plant available phosphates and ammonium. Monoammonium phosphate is produced by mixing phosphoric acid plus electricity, heat, and ammonia. It is the same as TAP, but has a lower concentration of nitrogen. It mixes well and frequently serves as an ingredient in, bl in bulk blended fertilizers. A high purity source of MAP is used as a feed ingredient for animals. The ammonium is synthesized into protein, and the dihydrogen phosphate supports a variety of metabolic functions in animals. It is also used in dry chemical fire extinguishers commonly found in offices, school, and homes. What's the difference between crops with phosphate and without phosphate? Well, this picture summarizes it for you. To grow healthy crops full of nutrients, farmers need to ensure that they have healthy soil. Without fertilizer, nature struggles to replenish the nutrients in the soil. This is why the phosphorus industry is important to people. Another product of the phosphoric acid produced from the wet process aside from fertilizers is feed supplements. The fluorinated phosphate rock or phosphoric acid is used to make animal feed supplements by combining phosphoric acid with sodium carbonate, phosphate rock, calcium, and lime to get calcium dicalcium phosphate. It is also used as a dietary supplement in food 
like cereals, flour, and noodle. It can also be used for animal supplements. Good afternoon everyone. This is Patricia Lalin and I will be discussing the second main process which is the thermal process. The raw materials for the production of phosphoric acid using the thermal process are white phosphorus, air, and water. Thermal process phosphoric acid manufacture involves three major steps. First is the combustion, second is the hydration, and third is the demisting. For the combustion, to optimize production efficiency, the feed of phosphorus track into a furnace needs to be as uniform as possible. To achieve this, phosphorus track is heated strongly in an oven which results in the fusion of small particles to form the hard nodules. The furnace is fed with a mixture of coke, sand, and phosphorus rock. This is the main reaction of the combustion. The elemental phosphorus is reacted to oxygen to produce phosphorus pentoxide. The gaseous phosphorus and carbon monoxide from the top of the furnace are passed into a spray of water. Molten calcium silicate slag and an alloy of iron and phosphorus, known as the ferrophosphorus, are removed separately from the base of the furnace. This is the main reaction in the furnace. For hydration, during storage, the mixture accumulates at the water surface and this phosphorus mud is either pumped back to the furnace for recovery of the phosphorus or distilled in separate mud distillation units. Fossil water is neutralized with lime, occasionally ammonia, settled and then treated with chlorine to remove the last traces of phosphorus. The last step is the misting, which removes the phosphoric acid mist from the combustion gas stream before release to the atmosphere. This is the final reaction for the wet process. Phosphorus pentoxide is mixed with water to produce phosphoric acid. Concentration of phosphoric acid produced from thermal process normally ranges from 75 to 85 percent. This high concentration is required for high-grade chemical production and other non-fertilizer product manufacturing such as detergent. Good afternoon, this is Anjali Alves and I will discuss about rotary kiln process and red phosphorus. There is an alternative process for the production of phosphoric acid which is known as rotary kiln process. Rotary kiln process is pretty much the same as the wet process. It is a good alternative because of its reduced environmental footprint and potential cost saving. The flow diagram of the kiln process includes grinding of phosphate rock to fine powder which is the following advantages. Increase the rate of reaction, less sulfuric acid is needed, and a higher grade of product in better condition is obtained. The finely ground phosphate rock is then mixed with sulfuric acid in a cone mixer. From the pod mill, the plastic superphosphate drops onto the den conveyor. When the den is filled completely after one hour, it is moved slowly to a mechanical cutter to pulverizer. The fumes are scrubbed with water sprays before being exhausted into the atmosphere. Lastly, the scrubber water is neutralized and the collected limestone is stored and drained. The next one is the manufacture of red phosphorus. The production of red phosphorus uses the white phosphorus produced from the thermal process. Red phosphorus is used in the production of semiconductors, pyrotechnics, fertilizers, safety matches, pesticides, smoke bombs, 
incendiary shells in organic synthesis reactions and certain flame retardants. It is also used in electroluminescent coatings. The produced white phosphorus from the thermal process is run from its storage tank into a steel pot where it is heated for days. The water escapes as steam through the safety pipe and phosphorus vapor loss is prevented by a reflux condensing system. After decanting most of the water, sodium carbonate is added. The remaining white phosphorus is then destroyed. Finally, the red phosphorus is removed and vacuum dried. This is the main reaction for the said process. Going back to earlier discussion, we already discussed the production of the main elemental phosphorus intermediates, which are the phosphoric acid, as well as for the production of red phosphorus. The other elemental phosphorus intermediates will only be discussed briefly. Phosphorus trichloride is highly reactive to atmospheric moisture and is transported in lead-lined, glass-lined, or nickel vessels. It is the direct reaction between phosphorus and chlorine. It has a number of important applications which include the production of phosphorus oxychloride, which is a chlorinating agent, phosphorus acid, which is used for herbicide glyphosate, and acid chlorides, which are used in pharmaceutical synthesis. White phosphorus reacts with sulfur to form a variety of sulfides, P4S10, P4S7, etc. By far, the most important of this is phosphate pentasulfide. It is the reaction between white phosphorus and sulfur. Phosphate pentasulfide is used to make various products such as lubricating oil additives which act as antioxidants, corrosion inhibitors, and insecticides such as sulfur-based organophosphorus pesticides. First, the calcium salt is made by reacting the white phosphorus with a slurry of lime at the boil. Subsequently, the calcium salt reacts with sodium sulfate to form sodium hypophosphite. This has a number of commercial applications including nickel plating, thermostabilizer for polymers, and synthetic resins during extrusion. Here is the list of the references that we use. That's the end of the discussion of phosphorus industry. Thank you for listening.